All right, Zach, what are you looking at? Well, we've been talking a lot here in recent weeks about childhood obesity and the role, if any, that the government can play in shaping it. Philosophically, it's actually a very difficult question. Individually, you can zoom in on parents, you can blame them for an obese kid. But what if the parents themselves are obese and then have been since children? What if they can't afford to eat healthier? Or what if they honestly just don't know anything about nutrition? To me, I like to focus in on those questions. Cost, information, policy. I'm not and would never claim that the US government can't solve childhood obesity. But something I am claiming is that an aggressive effort on the part of state, local governments with the feds could meaningfully affect it. I mean, just consider this. A 10% drop in childhood obesity means literally millions of children will not be afflicted with a lifelong problem. The numbers are staggering considering just how many kids and adults in the US are on track for terrible health over the course of their entire lives. That's why I started paying attention in the last few days to a really interesting story out of New Mexico, where traditional parts and blinders were not on display. Instead, we had a novel incident, a lawmaker who just kind of wanted to help children, and he was crushed by a big soda lobby. So New Mexico State Senator Greg Schmides, he's a Republican, but probably more importantly for this story, also a practicing surgeon, introduced a bill to prohibit the sale of soda in New Mexico public schools from pre-K to high school. Importantly, his bill would only apply to school hours. It had exceptions for after-school events like concession sales. Here, too, it's also worth pausing. We are not talking about adults, like Michael Bloomberg's proposed ban from a few years ago. I am of the opinion adults can make choices for themselves. If they want to be obese and they want to drink 60 ounces of soda, be my guest. I myself drink a 7-Eleven Big Gulp of diet soda once a week. <laughs> I am not perfect. Every time I drink it, I know it's not good for me. I like it. What can I say? But there's a big difference than an adult with a fully formed brain, well aware of the trade-offs being made with soda, and a child whose dopamine center is being hijacked by sugar. The discussion at the very least, I think, is important, and we need to develop parameters about children and protecting them in an environment where the state, by definition, is responsible for their well-being. Perhaps even more important than the idea than the bill. It's how viciously it was fought by Big Soda. According to the senator, after he introduced his bill, Coca-Cola flew six executives on a private jet immediately to New Mexico to kill the bill. They understood perfectly that if you let even a smaller population state like New Mexico ban soda, that the headlines would be devastating and that all other states might start asking questions. In fact, it's not just Coca-Cola that got in on the action. After the bill was successfully killed, you had PepsiCo executives doing backflips in the local press. Hmm. New Mexico local media quoted an executive who told them, quote, the bill is not needed. Why? Because, quote, current USDA regulations already limit beverage calories in schools are in place and followed by schools in New Mexico. Hmm, that actually gives away whole game. Right now, while the USDA does discourage the sale of caffeinated beverages in schools, it still allows it. In fact, the regulations say, quote, lower calorie beverages with up to 40 calories per eight ounces or 60 calories per 12 ounces may be sold in up to 12 ounce portions. As the Senator said in his hearing, quote, who are you going to trust more, beverage companies or our committee to care for our children? Despite his plea, senators killed the bill. Why? because they express concern that it would hurt sports and community programs, despite the explicit carve out in the bill for those very activities. You wanna tell me with a straight face that the big soda lobby didn't have anything to do with destroying that bill or rigging those USDA regulations? Hmm. Look, are there bigger fish to fry when it comes to childhood obesity? Absolutely. But as I've laid out here before, the sugar industry has already rigged the system with the FDA where you can have a no, quote, healthy food label on your food and you can't discriminate against the amount of sugar in a label product. Sugar consumption over the course of our lives has skyrocketed, especially in the last 50 years. It is unquestionably a major contributor to childhood obesity. Simply, it's palatable. Unfortunately, in reverse, a similar partisan fight is actually playing out in the state of New York. Mayor Eric Adams, who I have major disagreements in his pushing of vegan diets and meatless food, is trying to restrict the sale of chocolate milk in school. In response, Representative Elise Stefanik, who Trump has actually touted as potential successor for defending him on TV, introduced a bill, and I'm not joking, to require chocolate milk in all schools across the country. Her statement reads, quote, and Mayor Adams fails to understand that delicious flavored milk is how many of our kids access the essential nutrients in dairy for their development, and taking options away from children is not the answer. Hmm. Who wants to ask the Congresswoman why exactly chocolate milk is delicious? It's because of the sugar in it. 
In fact, the average school chocolate milk in the United States has a full 12 grams of added sugar. Sure, it is not as bad as a full sugar soda, but this is a game of inches, literally, in terms of restricting weight bans. I want to reiterate again, if you are an adult, go for it. But schools, we have a say. We should not let partisan blinders push us away from talking about what we give kids while they're at school. More so, we cannot let big moneyed interests buy off representatives to quash even the slightest attempts at getting kids slightly healthier. This entire episode is a very small glimpse into what we're all up against, and I hope everybody is paying attention because it will only get worse in the years to come. Yeah, the chocolate milk thing uh, is- I'm really nuts. glad you got that in. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.